you're a California guy in all your travels out there. Did you ever meet him? Did you ever have any encounters with him? No, I grew up a fan of his. I was a big football fan when I was a young man. And, you know, he was the first kind of superstar. And he was the first guy that was black and palatable to mainstream America, you know, like Jim Brown was a great running back in the NFL as well, but he was too sort of headstrong and outspoken and wasn't considered good for mainstream America. But OJ was the first and he was beloved by by all. I mean, you know, the notion that, you know, he was set up by the cops and it was a racist thing and everything else is is insane because he was at at the height of his powers, probably one of the most beloved Americans on the planet. That's right. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday, about how everyone fell in love with him. And much to the consternation of many in the black community, he disowned his blackness. He said, I'm not black, I'm OJ. And he was making it in, you know, what many considered it to be a white man's world, trying to be a guy who just got judged on the basis of his character and not to lean into any social justice issues or whatever we were calling him back then. And he was making it. He was multimillionaire, he was beloved, he was probably one of the most popular people on earth. I was just sent to saying to my friend who's 32, um, you have to understand, this would have been like Tom Brady getting arrested for double murder. Like, he was that beloved, successful, friendly, you know, outwardly seeming like jo jovial and jolly. And then suddenly you get the news that he's allegedly murdered his ex-wife and, and a friend. And, you know, the coverage of this, Adam, has been so ridiculous. Like, it, it wasn't, yes, it was 30 years ago. It wasn't that long ago. The people writing the AP news headlines could do with a simple Google search enough to figure out he was a double murderer and avoid headlines like, and I'll just give you a couple. Here's the AP. Uh, actually, I'll start with NPR. Breaking news. The football great Orenthal James Simpson, known as OJ, has died. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about the AP and we'll get into the stories of the young black man who was shot by the police and we can break down that game film. But what you need to understand with all the major news outlets as it pertains to race is they have two jobs. They have build up black if it's a cop shooting then make a big deal out of it if it's a bad cop shooting against a white or it doesn't fit the narrative then they tamp it down and so they do it with all stories and all stories of race so i was looking at it the other day which was uh a few months ago i can't remember if it was bobby or or another hockey legend died but they started it with controversial uh, racist comments and then got to the part where he was in the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's a great way point. Down the road. And so if you look at some of the white great athletes or luminaries who have died and you look, read these AP or USA, whatever, it starts off with some sort of controversial racist thing because obviously these guys had their heyday in the 50s and the 60s and they said something stupid when they were drunk and that's what they started with. So with OJ, you slide murder down below the fold. And if it's Bobby Orr, you slide racist up to the lead. That's so true. Like Roseanne is in our special, our, our comedy show, your comedy show that I'm co-starring with you in, uh, Mr. Burcham. You think they'd give her the same treatment? They're gonna put in the first line, many, many years from now when Roseanne passes, the comments that she made that ended her show, the reboot of her show. She won't get any lovely NPR headline, or I'll give you the AP one. Legendary athlete, I mean, come on. Legendary athlete, actor, and millionaire, colon. O.J. Simpson's right. murder trial lost him the American dream. You see, it was the right. trial, Adam, that did right. him and the unjust right. trial of him, not the fact right. that he almost cut his ex-wife's head off. Yeah, 
Well, they do this with with everything. Like they'll go, you know, COVID cost California small businesses ten billion dollars. It, it wasn't COVID that cost it. It was unnecessary shutdowns and closures. It was the reaction of the governor of California or whatever blue state you're in. But it wasn't COVID because COVID hit Florida and Disney World stayed open and COVID hit California and Disneyland shut down. So it wasn't COVID. It was the reaction to COVID. But yes, they're they're wordsmithing. It's very interesting. You have to really keep your eye on it. I don't think most people notice the wordsmithing. That, of course, is ridiculous. And if that was a white ball player versus a black ball player, then they would have slid the trial and they wouldn't have said trial. They would have said murder and they would have slid it up to the top. Or like I said, any any racist transgression, they'll slide it to the top and then all the 15 time all star stuff will be way, way down the line. So it's all part of a kind of a general massaging and it's not so undifferent than, you know, when they're looking for white national Christians or whatever such nonsense or what, you know, you know, when they say the biggest threat this country faces is uh, white supremacy. All right. Well, then, then they go find it and then they start massaging the stories. And if a black guy punches an Asian lady on the streets of Manhattan, they tamp that one down. And if a white guy protests out in front of a abortion clinic, then they build that one up. It's all part of the building up and tamping down. It's not just build up or tamp down. It's kind of both. Yeah. Oh, it's like every other day in the news or on, on my X feed, you see some group beat down by black students or black youths on a white kid. Uh, most recently in Connecticut, we just saw this circulating uh, in a, a park, happened just the other day. The white girl had uttered a racial slur. Nobody's gonna defend that. But the beat down looked like they were trying to impose the death penalty on her. I mean, the rabid rage unleashed on this girl. Then of course we saw another girl get almost murdered uh, in the same circumstances, that doesn't get put on loop by the media because it doesn't fit the narrative. They, can, they don't know how to explain, honestly, what looks like subhuman behavior by these assailants on these victims. They don't want to talk about it. But if the races were reversed, it would be everywhere. Yes. And for some reason, if there's a black and a white and the white puts his hands on the black, it is racist and it's a hate crime, even though it, there could be context to it. Maybe there's a traffic altercation or someone tried to hurt somebody or something like that. But in their world, there's no such thing as a black white interaction that's not racist unless it's multiple blacks trying to kill one white girl, in which case it has no application racially. So really their own measuring stick is bent into a pretzel. If you really think about it, like if, if you go like, well, look, um, they hate bad cop shootings, right? That's the number one thing they complain about is bad cop shootings. Okay, well then what about when cops shoot a white guy? Is that something you're bothered by? No, it's not something we're interested in. So their own yardstick for measuring this stuff is completely warped. And obviously they have an agenda and their agenda is to agitate and they're essentially going to cause a race riot. Like if they're not careful and they already kind of have, I mean, they they've done it with George Floyd in many other cases, but they're essentially baiting America into a race riot. That's They'd love essentially- it the news is doing. Yeah. So today, so today there was this woman on CNN who has it so backward. All right. So now it's gone. I've read you the AP and the NPR. We could keep going. There are a lot of other headlines, which are just ridiculous too. The New York Times um, had a doozy, but CNN puts on a commentator who used to work for Biden and Obama, and she takes it next level. She basically suggests, unless we do something about, you know, we have this conversation about race that we've apparently never had. I guess we didn't even have it no. in the wake of George Floyd. You're going to get a lot a more O.J. Simpsons. She listened to this incredible soundbite. It's not like O.J. Simpson was the, the leader of the civil rights movement of his era. You right. know, he wasn't a social justice leader. 
but he represented something for the black community in that moment, in that trial, particularly because there were two white people who had been killed. And the, the history around how black people have been persecuted um, during slavery, there were, there were just so many layers. And I guess I would just close with this, is that there was racial tension then, there is racial tension now. It might not be the backdrop of the Trump campaign, but until this country is ready to actually have an honest conversation about the racial dynamics from our origin story till today, we will always have moments like O.J. Simpson that manifest, and our country will always be divided if we don't actually deal with the issue of race. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Uh, she, first of all, uh, she brings up the race of the victims. She points out that somehow he represented something for the black community, particularly because he killed two whites. So that makes the black community more, what, empathetic in her view to OJ? Because, okay. And then she she lands it with, we're always going to have moments like OJ Simpson that manifest if we don't have this honest conversation. So I guess the whites are going to have to get used to all, the whole murder thing unless we get real frank about DEI? Yeah, it's uh, fairly insidious. You know, it always cracks me up, though. The group that always starts talking about having an honest conversation about race. All right, so let's like break that statement down. Okay, so we're having conversations about race, but we're not having an honest conversation about race. So you want an honest conversation about race. The only honest conversation there is about race is stop having kids out of wedlock. Stay home, dads raise your kids, intact family, family and education. That's about it. It'll work with all races. Debt. You can go to bed thinking about it and you can wake up thinking about it too. Here's the truth. The system traps you in debt. High interest credit cards and loans then make it nearly impossible to pay off the debt you have accumulated. And then insane inflation keeps you stuck paycheck to paycheck. It's just this ongoing cycle. Done with debt can be your lifeline. Done with debt has an ingenious new strategy to help erase your debt faster and easier than you ever thought possible. Done With Debt will analyze all the debt options that you qualify for. They know how to reduce bills and how to cut interest rates. Their skilled staff of negotiators, they know how to get debt out of your life permanently without bankruptcy and without a loan. Done With Debt has experts who can share with you strategies for eliminating debt, but you do need to hurry because some debt solutions are time sensitive. Here's how easy they make it. Go to donewithdebt.com, so easy to remember donewithdebt.com, donewithdebt.com. Check it out. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.